Hey guys, still there. Today, back with Cold Waters. We're gonna start up a new campaign, and my objective is to sink as much stuff as I can find. Of course, while doing the missions, so I'm gonna have to try and do some target prioritization, and mostly look for targets of opportunity. Now, I have enabled the crew voices. I'm not exactly sure how these things work yet, so this is gonna be just as much a test for you as it will be for me. Let's go for the 1984 campaign. We're gonna use a LA class boat, and... Uh, Let's see what they have in store for us today. We're in command of USS Philadelphia, the 690. Now, as per the usual, this is probably going to be a multi-part video because uh, you just generally don't get one of these campaigns done in one setting. At least, not in any reasonable time. Okay, we're looking for Spetsnaz Commandos landing in this uh, marine in the vicinity of Andoya in Norway. Intend to report our sub movements and perhaps sabotage a naval base. Not gonna happen on my watch. So we're gonna lie in wait near Andoya and potentially engage anything that happens to be nearby. Let's get underway. Now Andoya is right to the north there. So I'm making best speed across the Norwegian Sea. Hoping that I can get there and actually get into an ambush position before the enemy arrives from either Murmansk, Gromyka, or Arkhangelsk. And I also hope that I don't rush into anything headfirst. Oh, hello, boys. Now, I was just stopped, so my depth is only 50 feet, heading 57, and speed 5 knots. We do have a little bit of a storm going up there, but there are no layers here. So let's go to battle stations and engage some Spatsnaz before they actually become dangerous land operatives. Alright, new contact, bearing 054, doesn't get 01. Rip to all the headphone users. I'm sorry about that, that was extremely loud. Even for me, so... <laughs> Hope you guys are all still here. Anyway, let's see if we can identify Sierra One based on its current sound profile. It's not likely to be a Delta. These guys usually arrive in a diesel boat. It's usually a Sierra or a Kilo. Sorry, um, a Foxtrot. A tank. It might be a Tanko. By the looks of it, I don't exactly know where it is. Time to go a little bit deeper. So that if I need to run away, or if I need to do some maneuvering, I still have a little bit of room to do so. There does not seem to be any seabed here, so there's no reason for me to get worried about that. And, from the latest patches, I've read that they fixed the issues where the enemy submarines tend to run into the seabed. If all goes well, then they're no longer doing that. So that's a massive improvement. Now, once again, I'm going to have to mess around with the audio a bit. There, now you can just barely make it out in the video if all goes well. Now, Sierra 1 is a solution for 31%. I'm going to try and improve that a bit. I make a turn starboard. I have them on the VLF. I even have them on the passive array, so that's the bow sonar. It says 15,000 yards. By the way, my game is set up for realistic settings. I'm not exactly sure how realistic realistic is in this game just yet. But supposedly it's going to make it a bit more complex. And by the way, I am not hearing any crew voices whatsoever. I stand corrected. I shouldn't have said that. Now... I'm considering that what I'm dealing with is not a Kilo, is not a Tango, is not a Foxtrot, it's not a Romeo, so it's most likely not a diesel electric boat. We may in fact be dealing with something outside of our mission parameters. We might be dealing with a Victor 1. And if it is a Victor 1, sorry, a, yeah, a Victor 1. Then he is not that quiet. Let's level around at about 500 feet. If 
480, 485, 490 feet, 495, and there we are. Okay. I'm not sure if you can make out these crew voices because they seem to be rather quiet. I can just hear them in my headphones, but I'm not sure if the recording caught it. And interestingly, Zero One is cavitating. I still don't quite know where he is, depth wise. But if he is cavitating, then that would help my torpedo in finding him. So I'm going to try and get a torpedo in the water as soon as I get a solution for about 60%. Start it, let's say, over there. Make it a passive torpedo. And a passive should be able to hear the target. I'm going to make a turn to port. Try and get a bit more of a target motion analysis going. i got to say, I still love watching these things just lumber through the water slowly, quietly, and especially deadly. Target solution is 59%. I'm pretty certain it's a Victor 1. Target solution is 60%. 61. Range to target, ask per current, 11,000 yards. That is well within torpedo range. Now at this point I don't have him on the towed array because my towed array is of course being blocked by my own ship. Let's continue with the turn. Solution 64%, we're going to rig for ultra quiet. Making sure I don't get detected at all. Until I launch torpedo, that is. That's going to be loud. VLF is picking him up. The sonar, sorry, the uh, towed array sonar. 6.5, that's good enough for me. Run to enable. 3.5,000 yards, 2.1. One. He immediately goes active on his sonar. Let's try and stay with this torpedo for as long as possible so that I can guide it. Now again, I'm not sure if the recording caught it, but the crewman actually acknowledged the torpedo launch. It looks like Sierra 1 is not exactly where we left it. That will do. Old course at 045. Torpedo just went active and is starting to search for its target. Looks like Sierra 1 is trying to make a break for it, and the torpedo has acquired the target. You can see it's no longer searching. It's in fact chasing down a target. And our solution just jumped to 81%. And Sierra 1 is apparently not as far away as he would like to be. Tom Sonar, Sierra 1 is classified as submerged submarine. Yep, as a Victor 1, to be exact. So we were right about that. Now, a Victor 1 is a nuclear boat. I, in the previous campaigns, haven't seen the Russians using a nuclear boat to deliver a Spatsnaz team. It doesn't mean that they will never do so. It's just a bit of a break from tradition, if that this is where the seals are at. Now, the torpedo is just avoiding a noisemaker. Looks like this Victor is going to have all sorts of trouble. He's making good speed, 32 knots. Going as fast as he possibly can. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra 1, last bearing, zero, two, nine. Contact breaking up. 
Target destroyed. Alright, reload tube one with another Mark 48. Now we have scored a kill. And we were so slow and so quiet that I don't believe there are any other targets nearby. So I'm going to wait for the torpedo to load. And then we're going to end combat. That should do it. Con, torpedo room, tube one ready. Alright, tube one ready. We do have vessels nearby, however. We are not alone. That is interesting. So whatever it is that is nearby is very quiet and it didn't decide to go on the run despite me firing a torpedo normally when these targets hear a torpedo they immediately panic and they start running away at best speed not this guy now if it is such a quiet target it may mean that the Victor 1 was escorting another submarine potentially a kilo and with ambient noise at 94, there we go. There we go. Sierra 2 was hiding. And the question is, what exactly is Sierra 2? It's not quite lining up to be a kilo. But he may have been able to sneak up on me. 35%. Let's make a bit of a starboard turn, come to 045. The range is still jumping all over. Solution jumped to 41%. 33%. We only have him on a very weak signal on the toad ray. So we're really not sure where this guy is. Almost at 045. I'm going to keep my course at 045 for a while. And then make ready to just make another course turn or make another course adjustment. And potentially uh, do another leg for target motion analysis. It depends on how well my sonar is able to pick up this guy right now. We don't have a solution for 30%. According to the briefing, there are no friendly boats nearby, so whatever it is, it is not friendly. If this is a kilo, then it's not fast. It's 25 knots. My torpedoes are way faster than that. The solution's only 36%, though. Still, if the range is adequate, if it is indeed 8,000 yards, then he's already too close. I'm going to send out an active fish. I'm going to send out an active torpedo. Let's start to go active at a range of, again, 3,500 yards. But first I'm going to turn the boat towards that vector to make sure that I keep the wire attached to the torpedo. Because I'm worried that if I don't, that torpedo might start searching, not find anything. Instead, turn back to me. And we're going to have all sorts of issues with friendly or unfriendly torpedoes. So we're going to turn towards this target. And that is going to blind out the toad array. But I'm expecting to see whatever this is that we're chasing to start running and as such make himself known. The problem that we have right now is that the ambient noise is at 30, uh, sorry, 94 decibels. If this is what I'm thinking it is, it's going to be a uh, diesel electric boat which are known to be very quiet. And so the difference between their sound level and the sound level of the environment is very small making it rather difficult to get an ac accurate and adequate bearing on this contact. Now at the moment I don't think he's hurt me yet. He may have heard what happened to Victor 1, that was hard to miss. So you'd think that at this point he might be getting a bit worried. 
But at least he didn't fire off a torpedo in my general Contact direction. Our lost contact. Sierra, two. Last bearing, one, four, zero. Contact faded. That's fine. We're going to fire a torpedo at 140. Tube one away. Now, I would love to continue with my target motion analysis and head, for example, back on my previous course. But that would break the wire to the torpedo, and I'm going to keep that attached. So we're just going to wait for this torpedo to go active and start looking for targets. And at the same time, I'm waiting for Sierra 2 to reappear because he starts making much more noise as he starts running away from this torpedo. That's the plan. Let's see if it works. If not, then I have a complete complement of torpedoes standing by and ready to cause all sorts of trouble for this guy. Apparently he hasn't hurt my torpedo yet. At this point though, he really should. Because it's actively pinging away. So where is Sierra 2? If he is indeed this far away, then it would explain that the torpedo is just not able to acquire him yet. So we're just going to have to be a bit patient. I'm going to speed up time a little bit. See if the torpedo... There we go. Torpedo zigzagged for just a second or two there. And is now tracking something. Apparently, whatever it is tracking is still so damn quiet that only my torpedo can find it. Now I cannot see Sierra 2 on the map. But I can see Sierra 2 through... Ah, there we go, it's a whiskey. Semi-noisy, actually. I can see it through the map, or through the uh, visual interface. So, this whiskey, as you can see, was prowling. He was operating at 7 knots, and is now trying to speed the hell away from here. Yeah, well, you're still attached, so we're just going to ignore that noisemaker and continue directly for the target. Come on. Reacquired. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra 2. Last bearing 1, 3, 8. Contact breaking up. Alright, so that might have been the insertion team. That might have been the team that they were trying to drop off. And I just managed to get there in time. So we're going to continue to reload to 1. There are no vessels nearby. So I think that we have this Con, thing done. Room, tube one ready. Let's leave combat. Yep, we sunk the, vi the Victor one, we sunk the whiskey. And we have sunk the Spatsnaz commando team aboard what I think was the whiskey. That's one done. Let's see what they have in store for us next. Satellite recon. Oh joy. We have an enemy landing force leaving Murmansk four hours ago into the Norwegian Sea. They're looking to invade Trondheim. This is going to be an interesting mission. This is going to be a tough one. Now, again, I want to try and ambush these guys. So we're going to prowl up and get into the position where I'm expecting that group from... Hang on. You're not what I'm looking for. You're not at all what I'm looking for. This is a submarine. Contact Sierra 1 bearing 103. So he's going to be my sonar, or at least my uh, total ray blind area. And aside from that, there is a moderate layer making detection more difficult. So it's time to head a bit further so sorry, uh, west, southwest. Continue diving getting the layer out of the way and then seeing if I can pick up this bad guy again passing 100 feet Con sonar regain hello Sierra one bearing one zero one 
So there you are. Now it's the question of what you are. I think that this is just another submarine patrol. Potentially item Romansk. And by the looks of it, it might stack up to be a Foxtrot. If it is, feet. it's potentially really close at four and a half thousand yards. Could be a Romeo. Yeah, it's more likely to be a Romeo than a Whiskey. Con sonar, Sierra 1 is classified as submerged submarine. All right, we're going to speed up time to accelerate the ta target motion analysis. Feet. That's deep enough. We are losing this guy. Solution starting to degrade. I'm going to make a turn to starboard to give my passive tow ray the best opportunity to detect this guy. Solutions building, 50%, 60%, 75%. And now we have exactly where this guy is, 95% solution. So that turn really helped me out. Because now I also am in a position where I can fire my torpedo and still have it wire guided. I'm going to try and come into the baffles of this Sierra 1. I'm going to try to attack him from the rear. Rig ship for ultra quiet. We are at ultra quiet. As little noise emission as possible. I'm going for all stop. All stop. Helm, I. I'm just going to sit here. And wait. Prowling like the predator that we are. It seems that this guy is not really aware of what's going on. Although he is turning my way. I don't quite like that. I think that he might be doing a turn to clear his baffles. Which, if that continues, is going to achieve the opposite. It's going to achieve him making it easier for me to get into his baffles. Into his sonar blind area. Two and a half thousand yards. This is point blank range. This is close enough. Tube one, zero one. Good luck with that. Con, torpedo room, firing two one. Ahead, one third, helm I. I think that the crew voices still need some work. Again, I'm not sure if they're going to be detected in the recording, but. At the moment, I still much prefer the sound or the, the crew voices from Subcommand. So maybe they can deal with make a deal with uh, Sonalists, the producers of Subcommand. Now, seems that this guy is completely oblivious. He must have heard the launch, and he must have heard the torpedo approaching, and then the torpedo sonar. He didn't go active. He didn't actually fire a torpedo. He didn't do anything to avoid the torpedo. So that's unusual. No other units nearby. Let's go. Yep, sunk a Romeo. Well done. Not your target. Uh, no. The target is going to be coming up. Uh, another sub? And the surface fleet is just beyond it. Okay. Let's once again engage this submarine. We are close to the surface. We have a layer at 84 feet. So the layer is probably blocking detection. We're going to continue making our course due north. And proceeding to beyond the layer. Passing 100 feet. There is Sierra 1. I don't think it's going to be a Delta. Not a Juliet. Kilo. Con 
sonar. Sierra one is classified as submerged. Rig ship for ultra quiet. At ultra quiet, let's see what this guy is going to be up to. We have him on the passive array and on the toad array. I'm not sure about his distance. Do we know? Yeah, he's close to the layer, making him more difficult to detect. If that is adequately uh, modeled in the game. Make a slight course change to the east. See if we can improve the target motion analysis a bit. The solution's only 45%. I could send out an active torpedo in his general direction and wait for him to respond. There we go, he just... Oh, he's not alone. This guy has friends. Which might be another kilo, judging by its profile. So I'm going to go ahead and make this um, kilo identification. Now, we're going to fire an active torpedo in the general direction of Kilo, Sierra 1, and then continue on north, looking and especially listening for Sierra 2, which we still have a pretty weak identification on, but I don't think he's at 27,000 yards. I think he's way closer. So, continue on a starboard course. Sorry, uh, so course southeast, lining up with Sierra 1. And I could send out a torpedo in the general direction of Sierra 2, but I don't want to do so just yet. I want my torpedo to hit the target, especially considering that that surface group is coming up, and I'm probably going to need all the torpedoes I can get. So I'm not really in a position to waste any weapons. I still have my stores ready with 10 Mark 48s. I have 8 Harpoons, and that's it. And that surface group tends to consist of a numerous, or a, yeah, about 8 ships, generally. About 8 ships. Okay. Um, I'm not sure about his range, so I'm going to say 1,500 yards. Wait for the own ship to line up with the bearing. Then we're going to scare the shit out of Sierra 01. Oh, Sierra 2 just went active. That's an interesting development. Why would you want to go and do that? Now, I did make a mistake ending the last mission because I didn't reload to 1. Go. Shit, wire break. Okay, reload tubes 1 and 2. Mark 48s. Sierra 2 just launched. Okay, we're going to snapshot a tor uh, torpedo back into his general direction. I am not deep enough. Sierra 1 just launched. My floor is at 606 feet. Which means that I can run at flank speed without being detected. Let's go a little bit less in the dive planes. Ooh, this torpedo is going to be an issue. Sierra 1 just exploded. I'm not sure if this torpedo is active yet. I'm really hoping that it's not. Ahead, full, helm, high. We are not making that much noise. We're not cavitating. 50 feet below the keel. Oh, we are at 580, no, 590. Up, up, up. 593. This is deep enough. Thank you very much. We just have 7 feet below the keel. Now, that is 2 meters in the metric system. That is cutting it rather close. 
Now this torpedo that you see snaking through the water here behind me, room. Two, two, ready. I think that it was not active yet. So it wasn't actively looking for me when I passed it. So actually running straight at the torpedo worked. Just like it did in um, the Hunt for Red October where I believe it is the Red October itself. It runs head on into an enemy torpedo. Fired by what I believe to be uh, Bill Skarsgård's boat. Now it looks like the other Mark 48 that I snapshotted in the general direction of Sierra 2 has acquired a target. And the target is slightly maneuvering. You can still see that the torpedo is tracking him. We have a noisemaker. Yeah, he's good as dead. Reload tube 3. Now that other torpedo that we saw coming in our direction is apparently over here. And looks to be a potential problem. Now he's not actually looking for a target just yet. And I'm hoping that I can continue to do so. Or continue to keep it that way. So I'm just going to operate very, very slowly. With the potential to immediately move to flank speed. Con, torpedo room, tube three ready. Alright. Con, sonar, Sierra, one. Oh. Classified as submerged submarine. I misidentified Sierra one. Still. Target dead. Okay, we have a total of 11 torpedoes and 8 harpoons. That's User 15. Joined your channel. Thank you, TeamSpeak. That's 15 weapons. That should be enough to deal with the surface fleet. Now, here's something that I can try to do. That torpedo, if it goes active, I might be able to lure it over this target, which is at the moment making more noise than I am. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Oh my. If it starts pinging, and I'm not sure it will, but I think it might, because it was what I think to be a snapshot by Sierra 2, so just a panic torpedo. I think it's still on its run to enable, so it's still on a position, or it's still on... There we go, it just went active. This just got interesting, but that's not really the weapon that I'm worried about. There's my boat, and he's looking for surface threats. He's already sort of passed over my boat. The torpedo cone, or search cone, is probably looking in not too shallow, or not too deep waters. So the alternative is that I just sit here and do nothing. Because he's, there we go, he's right overhead. I am going to continue to close on this Tango, zero 01, whatever left of it, so that if push comes to shove and this thing does come for me, I can use it as a very large decoy. And yes, that has worked before. Unfortunately, I wasn't recording back then. I used, I think, a dead Oodaloy as a distraction for an active torpedo that was chasing me. Uh, the torpedo is moving off. The other one is not even nearby, so I think we're fine. Let's wait for those torpedoes to just piss off. All stop. No, we're not here to rescue any survivors. We're just here to use you as a decoy. Besides, I couldn't even rescue survivors if I wanted to. No weapons nearby, no vessels nearby, nothing. So we're going to leave combat. Tango 1 and Tango 2 have been sunk. Excellent results, not your mission. No, the actual mission is coming up right now, but we're at the end of the video. So, hope I can get your attention next time for the engagement of the USS Philadelphia with an invasion group. It's going to be an interesting fight. 
I can guarantee you that much. So, join me next time as we're engaging an invasion fleet heading for Norway. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments, and I'll see you soon for more submarine warfare.